Hello, Ollie, how are you doing? Hey, good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, really good. I told you I'd interview you. You went on the train. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> when I saw when I saw how you guys on the list, I was like, I wonder if that might be Stefan. <laughs> well, here we are. I love the yeah. show, which I can say, and I'm not just saying that, but I really, really enjoyed it. I'm gonna. I will. I'll start with you, actually, Gavin. I thought it was a fantastic performance. I mean, I love the character. Stefan has this kind of infectious kind of optimism. He's a sort of romanticist, a, sort of a bit of a blissful sort of dreamer at times. It's sort of shades of that character, Jeff from Jeff Who Lives at Home. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Yeah, I just yeah. wonder if he, um, if he rubbed off on you at all. A char if characters like that are quite contagious. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think I, 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 I can be off, awfully pessimistic about things, and I think he's a he's a diehard optimist, and that was that was quite nice to play. Am I, is, is, it, is it based on this Stefan? Is that the Stefan that I? <laughs> no, actually, no, I, I, I literally, and, and when you popped up, I was like, oh yeah, no, I guess <laughs> oh, yeah, I was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it was, it was such a great character to play. And I, I, I feel like I just kind of, uh, I, I just, I seem to understand, uh, you know, the character straight away. Now, I don't know if that was his haplessness or his accident proneness or uh, his inability to uh, handle the situation properly. I don't know if that was just what I, I'm like too, but yeah, I, I, I was really drawn to the character. Yeah. No, he has, he has got a great name. I, I don't usually notice names of characters as much, but I kept noticing this. And I, I'm not sure if it's because it was said a lot of times, but it, obviously because I, I don't hear the name Stefan heard so often, I sort of it yeah. felt like it was said a lot of times. And that weirdly familiar sort of old Stefan, what are you doing line just felt, it rang quite true. But um, I was going to ask, Ollie, I mean, how do you choose? It got me thinking, how do you choose names? Like as a writer, at what stage does a name come into a character? Not just this one, just generally. Is it something that comes naturally? Do you have to sit down and really think about what a character's called? Yeah, what's the process? It's, it's a good question. Um, and I don't remember why he's called Stefan now. Um, I think sometimes it's sometimes it just it feels like a character like a character's like calling out to you to be called something. Mm. Um, sometimes it's a question of me going to a baby name website and refreshing it until <laughs> I, until something that feels right yeah, yeah, yeah. turns up. Um, so it might have been that, maybe. Um, but uh, Like a and, Star um, Wars name generator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One thing we've, we've, we've been doing some writing on season two, and one thing we've realized is we've ended up with a lot of characters with uh, names beginning with S. Mm. And we've had to like... We're, we're really kicking ourselves suddenly they're, they're, because when you write in final draft in the screenwriting thing it's meant to be like a shortcut when you put when you put the first letter oh, in. oh yeah and so, that's yeah. yeah so um but uh yeah i'm yeah i wish i could remember why stuff on now yeah maybe it was you yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, there is i was, I was going to say Tom, I mean, it's a real masterclass of imbalancing genres i think in this show because it works as a comedy it's romantic there's action there's the sort of t detective work it's dark at times um only did that all come quite naturally or was there a kind of a conscious editing job at the end to ensure it all worked in unison and nothing was sort of compromised along the way yeah i mean partly it's it's um you know, I, I give George and Laura, our directors, a lot of credit because it's, I, you know, I think that's what directing is yeah, to a large extent. It's that. just policing tone and 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 keeping it all kind of running smoothly. Um, but uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, I, I, it's my favourite thing to do is is to to pick up genres like their Barbie dolls and kind of smash them together and and <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a bit of a balancing act, I think. Um, uh, was it hard for you? Like I, I was saying this on some of the other interviews that like it it's I don't know how Ali and the team managed to do it, but it never he, they seem to be able to write scenarios that are so extreme and over the top that also somehow feel incredibly grounded and realistic to play. I think that's the dialogue. That's what and the characters' relationships with each other seem very real. So even though something's very heightened, it it, it always felt very sincere to play it, you know, quite truthfully and, and genuinely. Because you don't want to go too over the top with too much of the comedy and and and, and the same with the action as well. Yeah, um, I, I, and I think w what you were saying, Stefan, about the, the editing process, like I think that was that was definitely it was was finding the moments that felt too like meta or too too kind of winking and nodding or or whatever it was, and 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 those were when we were like, okay, we actually need to pull back a little bit and focus on the the reality yeah. of it and the emotion and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, Gavin, do you always sort of approach every role in the in the same way, even if it's really heightened or if it's something's more sort of like, you know, sort of naturalistic? Is your approach always the same and do you just have to trust the writing to do that side of stuff? Uh, I don't know if I'm, uh, uh, my approach is always the same way, but I think with this, particularly with the, maybe the comedy side of it as well, 
you have to make it try and feel very natural and uh, and feel very honest. I think it can be different sometimes if you do theater or, or film and you can't really hide as much on screen. So I think it needs to be very, at the heart of it, I think it needs to be very sincere. Um, and, you know, hopefully that's, that's what kind of comes across with it. Um, but again, going back to it, like the, the writing, the scenes, I don't know how, but they just feel very real when you're playing them, even though there's some really funny moments and like you said maybe the edit you'd kind of catch certain moments that we went too far and that's fine on the day I think what you the best thing you can give a director and and, and the kind of creative team is the editors is just variety and options so you know we'll maybe play often maybe with particular comedy is you you play what's on the page then maybe the physical scenario of the place you're in has changed the scene a little bit you play that as well and you play all these different scenarios and then hopefully by the end of the day, they have enough to kind of work with to, to then in the edit room, just kind of hone that down to the, so you get one uniform style. Um, Cause it's hard, performers are all very different and they bring different styles, particularly with comedy. Some comedians are very, or actors are very big and some are very small. And in, even in this, I think you have a slight different style of, of actors working together. But again, that's, you know, that's what George did really well as well. Mm -hmm. and, and Laura was to kind of keep that through line. Yeah. I know I was going to ask, I mean, I, your picture, um, I mean, when you first write this, when you sort of first put pen to, to paper, I mean, mm. your picture, the characters in your own mind, and they might be certain people you know, or they could just be kind of like, a, a bit like when you read a book sometimes, you kind of have these images of what the people look like, and they can be these kind of blurry images sometimes. But having now started writing season two, do you now yeah. picture Gavin and Rosa in the characters? Are they? Is it different now, the characters, to the ones you, you wrote when you started writing season one? Yeah, and even I mean, we were we were we were writing the sort of the, the second block of episodes while you know after these guys had been cast, and even when we were filming, we were still kind of desperately trying to finish that. <laughs> yeah. And um, and it, it got so much easier just having seen them. I think even the, the 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 sort of first tape you did with with Rosa like was a scene I think I'd written like the day before or something, right. and and um, and and I immediately went back and rewrote some stuff just because I was like. Okay, no, I know how they yeah. sound together and 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 how they what their vibe is and things like that. So, yeah, so it's it's really really helpful. Um, and and yeah, and I and I hope you know if 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 we are lucky enough to get to get to do more, um, that'll you know we'll we'll get all lots Rose, of different sides yeah, of yeah. sides of the characters and yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, Rosa is wonderful. Gab, what was it like sort of collaborating with her so closely on this? And did you get the chance to audition much together? I know this probably was back in a time when there was lots of still stuff happening on Zoom and people were meeting via Zoom. So was it quite tricky initially to to form? Yeah, that? It, it, it was. It was. I mean, it was exactly that. Like we, we our our first audition, our main audition, chemistry reading, as I call it, was was on Zoom. And I remember, I I genuinely remember dreading that because it seems mm. like an oxymoron like it's a they're antithetic antithetical to each other like you can't have a chemistry reading on zoom but we really did just hit it off so well and we had a really good dynamic and the way in which we'd be able to kind of wind each other up in the scenes and slightly tweak things and um and we just were kind of speaking that same language pretty much instantaneously and that kind of worked really well and she's she's you know she's brilliant she's so talented and you know she really can drive a scene and you know it's fun you're just trying to keep up with her <laughs> but yeah yeah have either of you ever heard of a real instance of someone coming in at a wedding when they say can anyone think of a reason why these two can't marry and actually saying something have you ever heard a first-hand account of that before you know what i haven't i i went i was at one wedding which which is slightly inspires the the episode two wedding with lorna where uh she was the, the bride was i think 45 minutes late um and you could see the groom go from like you know a little bit nervous to then like joking and being like <laughs> to then going like oh god she's not coming and then she did turn up and everyone was you could feel the whole like <laughs> sort of church like exhale at once uh i don't think i've ever heard of anyone no not no. turning up no i don't think so it's just it's a very ballsy move you know? yeah <laughs> um but just very quickly before i do go i know my time's sort of up i just wanted to ask because because well, i'm in the midst of a wedding season at the moment because it's all you know i'm 33 there's tons uh so what what song both gets you on the dance floor at a wedding what's the one so when you hear it you're just like that's it you run inside um uh I'm I'm getting I'm getting married in in October and and we've just been doing the RS getting the RSVPs in. There's a little like song request uh, thing on the bottom, 
And I can always tell when one of them's come from a particular group of friends because we all, uh, there's a song called The Rap by The Walkman. Uh, and they've all put The Rap because it's the one thing where like the dance floor will clear because no one else knows it. And the like eight of us will just like flock and shout in like like shout in the middle of it. So yeah, that's that's my one. That's pretty good. I think what's that one in Father Ted where they play on <laughs> this house? The ghost the, town. The, the ghost town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make that my first dance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, my lovely horse. Oh, my lovely horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that that will get me moving. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. quite a romantic song. Um, anyway, um, thank you so much, and it was lovely to to lovely see you on and, and lovely to meet you, Gavin. And best of luck with the release of the series. Good, man. Thank All you. Thanks, man. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.